are we going? We're going to Palermo because we are on a very special mission to taste and explore the local. We're exploring the local street food of Palermo. Yes. We're going to go eat. But in the meantime, we want to show you how beautiful and Same. how absolutely stunning the landscape is from Trapani to Palermo. So just look because you would never expect you would the region of Sicily to be so Wow. wow. Definitely wow. Wow. Andiamo. We have just arrived in Palermo and Benny. I would say let the mission begin. I'm fast because I'm hungry. This is the theater Teatro Massimo Vittorio Emanuele and we are in Palermo and this is the, the largest theater in Italy and the third largest theater of Europe. Imagine that after Paris and Vienna. And we're not talking about large for number of seats, but as dimensions of the theater. Look how beautiful it is. So he is preparing la frittola, which is practically, it's a typical street food here in Palermo, and it's made with the leftovers from the slaughtering of animals. So it's just bits and pieces of various meat. What's it get? Pepe. Pepe. E limone. E limone. And I'm about to try it. Actually, like this first. Good. Delicious. So the frittola is actually not a street food that you can go and find it in shops. This is the food of the people that work in the local market and I've never tasted it. Wow, delicious. So it's veal. Everything is veal meat. Wow. So the wonderful concept of street food here in Palermo also reflects what we always say, that we have such a respect for food that we don't waste it. So this street food that we just had, La Fristola, was, as if we said, a way to repurpose, because when you slaughter an animal, you have to respect every single part of it, not just the nice parts that were back then only for elite. So all the leftover parts, bits and pieces, the interiors, those were given another life, and they became street food, street food for the people of the place, for the workers of the place. It's not something that, you know, that was not made for tourists. And, uh, and that's why it's so wonderful. And it dates back to the beginning of the 15th century, of the 16th century, sorry. And it's amazing. I mean, it's genuine, real street, street, street food. It's not made to be street food, it's street food. The cinchona is generally known in uh, overseas countries like the United States, but even North American countries like Canada, as Sicilia pizza. But Sicilian pizza, I give you a scoop. <laughs> it's just the name that was uh, chosen by the Italian American people when they started to make this cinchona in the United States because it was too complicated to explain to every person. No, this is a cinchona, this is not pizza. Sicilian pizza. Sicilian pizza. Fast and easy. Okay, that was the <laughs> That's idea. That's beautiful. Mm. So, uh, but the sfincione in Palermo, you can't call Sicilian pizza because the sfincionaro uh, becomes upset if I do this. Because he says, no, sfincione is sfincione, pizza is pizza. They are two different things. And the sfincione has a kind of dough that is softer and thicker than the normal pizza okay. and the spinchone has a very basic topping because you put just breadcrumbs, tomato, onion, oregano, olive oil and pepper. Breadcrumbs? Uh, yes, a little, a little bit of breadcrumbs. They breadcrumbs. And then they prepare in the night, they give, they, they I mean the people that literally make the spinchone, okay. they give to the vendors in the morning and the vendors go all around the city in their own fixed position like our friend Giulio okay. or with the tuk tuk, with the apecar, a little truck <laughs> selling the spinchone around the city. 
amplifying their voices with microphones, you know, with speakers, uh, and uh, yelling Sicilian sentences to advertise their arrival. That's beautiful. And uh, the stinchone is a kind of soft dough that is better when you warm it up a little bit before serving because during the hour of resting, the stinchone is absorbing the tomato sauce, the onion flavors, so it becomes a taste. If you instead generally warm the pizza, it's not the same effect. With the stinchone, it works better. Here is written spincionello, bello, bello, but spincionello means single portion. Ah. The name, like spincione, spincione is the name of the product, the spincionello is a single portion. So spincione is written like this without the last okay. fillet. <laughs> and bello, bello, right? It's beautiful, beautiful. beautiful. So common, uh, common adjective used by the local people also to refer so when they talk about food, they don't only say food, but they say bad. Giorgio, intra, giusto? Giorgio, intra. Let's come also bigger. Yes, yes. The spinzone, there are two versions of the spinzone. The street version, now as the ingredients that I've just mentioned, and the bakery version. The bakery version is a little bit richer, because in the bakery version, as original recipe, you also find on, on the topping uh, cacio cavallo cheese and uh, anchovies. But they have been cut in the street version because not all the people love the intense taste. How is it? It's super soft. And it has the breadcrumbs on top. I yeah. love the idea. Here a little bit. In the bakery version, you literally perceive sometimes the crunchy breadcrumbs. Easy. And is it made with lard? No, no. It's made with... Uh, we can ask to Giulio this detail. I, I, I think that... Just flour, yeast and salt. That's how the dough is made. Look, simple and delicious. Baked ricotta. Baked ricotta. Look at this. Look, it's still steaming. It's another way of eating the ricotta. Uh, that you can uh, you can eat cold, but we generally prefer to warm it up a little bit, okay. and uh, it becomes again soft and more creamy. This is normally made mostly in the summer when the ricotta becomes a little bit drier because the pasture are a little bit drier and the creamy ricotta becomes a little bit wet. So you bake and it becomes uh, like also easier and tastier to eat. But there's olive oil and oregano. Olive oil and oregano is a dress up that is optional. We, we do it but you can eat it it's just also as a simple ricotta. We put olive oil, lemon and oregano almost on everything but not coffee. <laughs> Obviously, I know it's a silly question, she... but, but actually it's not a silly question because in Sicily we have uh, two kinds of ricotta. The uh, western part, Palermo, Trapani, it's all sheep, but eastern part is ah, cow. Okay, so it was not a silly question. No. This is delicious, mamma, è buonissima. And you really taste it. Buona, buona, buona. buona. Valeria, do you want some? I don't know if you can see the three little tiny, tiny leaves of oregano. And he said, crush it and smell it. You have the entire Mediterranean in the palm of my hands. And arancini over here they are just with rice then they will be put in this batter over here of flour 
and fizzy water, then bread it here, and finally happily fried. And you will see, because that is mine with the meat, that I'm just going to eat as soon as it's ready. Good. You like it? What is it? It's a soup. Not that. Arancino. Arancino. Gotta be careful. Yeah. I make a mistake. And ladies and gentlemen, here is the arancina that you saw frying. Here it is. And do you understand and do you see why it's called, it's very hot, arancina? Because it looks like an orange. And this one is a traditional one with meat. So, I mean, look compared to my fist, it's practically the same size. So, arancina comes from the word arancia, which means orange. Grazie. Wow. Is it hot? <laughs> Go open it in half. Look at that. See how thin the, the layer of the rice is around? And all that I go is right there. You may now eat. She said she loves it. of veal. Okay. We're about to taste are the intestines of veal. So there's something very similar in Rome. So this is the in intestines that are all swirled together of veal. So big. Come si chiama? Stigliola. Stigliola. Look how beautiful it is. This is what it looks like when it's raw. And then you barbecue it. We are having something very, very typical from here, but you will have to explain. This one is called Pane Camilsa in Sicilia. Pane con la milza in Italiano splint sandwich in English. It's actually a sandwich made, uh, stuffed with the veal spleen uh, that is uh, boiled and then afterward also uh, sliced very thin and finally pan fried in pork fat in this typical pot of the spleen vendors where they are preparing the, uh, the sandwich very hot before <laughs> very hot before serving. Franchi Senata, prima di morire, Franchi Senata, siccome lui ha uscito una canzone a Splendid Little Night, è giusto? E mi ha visto a me che io dicevo Splendid Little Night. Mi ha mandato un'email e mi ha ringraziato, mi ha fatto i complimenti per questa cosa. Prima di morire si è complimentato con me, mi ha mandato un'email Siccome lui ha uscito splendido, io cosa dico? Splend, splend, ne ne okay. Mr. Basile is actually an historical family of the Ucciria market that has been selling splint sandwich for 70 years. Not wow. him, but his grandfather started this business. I actually find it delicious. Yes. This is the grand finale of our food tour. What are we having here? We're having on one side the stigiola, that is the intestines of the veal grilled up, the one we've seen before. And on the other side, we have a little crown made with chickpea pancake called panelle, small 
potatoes croquette with mint and parsley and a specialty from Palermo. Everything is a specialty from Palermo. <laughs> but this is a specialty of a few Panellaro vendors. That is a mix of chickpea pancake, potatoes croquette, plus onion and parsley. Originally born as the leftovers of the working table of the most noble, more noble panella croquette. This is called rascatura. That means raschiare, grating, removing the leftovers of chickpea pancake and mashed potatoes from the working table. So this is the son of this and this. Exactly. Exactly. I couldn't define them better. <laughs> and the lemon is still on top? Yes. We put lemon everything. Literally everything. The, the street vendors always provide lemon you can put in the chickpea pancake, in the potato croquette, in the intestines. But intestines, don't let it get cold. No, I won't. This is a potato croquette, it has mint inside. Mint and parsley. Mint and parsley, very refreshing, very good. Then, <laughs> panella, the chickpea Pan. flour pancake, and this I'm very curious to try. And parsley, because there is all parsley. Do you wanna do you wanna feel more of our also our friend uh, Panellaro? Do you wanna see him? This is where they made what the dish that Benny was having. It's fried over here. And these are the panelle that are not fried yet. These are the croque of potatoes. And these are called rascatelle. Rascatura. Rascatura. You see? So they have them ready over here. And then they fry them over here. I would say, yes, I would say thank you. It was a great pleasure to have you. Thank you great. so much because Benny, that's it. Mission accomplished. Thank you.